Hi, this is God from Team UNSF, and we're going to be doing an overview today. Uh, this is an overview of one of my personal guns. It's the KWA SR10. Um, now let me remove this barrel sock. Safety first. Go check out our uh, safety video that we'll be putting up soon. Here, I'll just up there. Uh, also, just for review purposes, another safety thing. We're just going to take the mag out. We'll go back to that later. So this is indeed the KWA SR10. I got this off of Airsoft GI for about $385. Free shipping is over $100. Like I said, it's just an overview, because I hate when people say, oh, this is the review of blah, blah, blah. I've had it for two days, and it's the most awesome gun in the world. They really don't know how it's going to perform a year from now, a month from now, however long. So we're going to... Um, just do an overview, tell you basic stuff about the gun, what I think of it so far, and then we're going to come back a year from now and do a full-on review, plus all the stuff that's on it will go with it. I also have another thing that goes with this. How long have you had this? I've had this for almost a year. I got this at the end of August last year, so it'll be coming up on a year soon, so this sh the review of this should be coming out pretty soon. So, um, like I said, this is the KWA SR. And it's actually, I think, technically the KWA KM4-SR10. Uh, I think this is it's the SR10. This is called uh, it's a 10-inch RS unit. Talking about the RS unit, four rails. Uh, the D-ring is a little funky. I like it, but at the same time, I don't like it. This is like two millimeters crooked down into the left. And this isn't the normal one where you just pull back. You get this like weird little prong tool and put it in there in the pegs and twist it off. But I mean... I'm not going to be anal about that. Aha, uh -huh, that's what she said. Because you don't really need the front unless you're using I mean, some really it's weird... It's really not noticeable. I mean, I did it when I was trying to put like a long-ass sniper rifle scope on here just for shits and giggles, and I found out it wouldn't match up going from this row to this one because this one was slightly lower. But, I mean, it really... You're not going to notice it. Um, This is just like a $10 cheesy vertical grip, but it works pretty well. I'll take that off. Um... This is, I think it's like the B2, B2 like paranormal uh, ACOG site. Paranormal. That's what it's called. I can't remember what this, the actual name is. And it is I got it off of Airsoft GI. It's like 120 bucks. I like it. I mean, I didn't want just a normal red dot. I wanted an ACOG and that great ACOG. So this is what you'll be getting in the gun. It's just a normal. It's... The reason I got this is I like M4s and I like M16s, but I wanted something in between length of a standard M4 and shorter than a standard length M16. And this has a longer barrel than a normal uh, M4, but it's not as long as an M16. I think it might be just now, even with the stock pulled out for the sixth position, it's still longer than an M4, but shorter than M16, which I like. That's the sweet spot for me. Um, since we're talking about the stock, it's got a six positional stock and it lets you know the numbers as you're going out. This is also where the uh, battery is housed and this is one feature I love about the gun. There's these little tabs on either side of the gun, or on the stock I should say rather, and you just pop, that pops right off. You can put a nunchuck battery in there, it's small type, you connect it right there, you put everything back in, easiest battery installation, then you just take this Put it back over, snap both sides down, and you're done. Oop, whoops. Oh well. It's full metal. I can't hurt this thing. Um so yeah, great battery installation. It's comfortable. I love this. I was never I never had a gun with a crane stock. It was always just the normal LE stocks or the full length M16 stocks. You can get a great cheek weld. If you if you don't know what that means, it's how your cheek well, welds to the part of the stock. Great cheek weld. That's the first thing I noticed when I shouldered this weapon. Now let me flip it around so you can see all the goodies. Um, it's got a rear flip-up sight. It's uh, adjustable for windage and elevation. It's got the uh, peep sight. And then it's got the uh, uh, short range sight. And we also have a flip-up front sight, which is adjustable for windage, I believe. It just screws on with a little screw on there. I mean... The other pet peeve I have with this gun, it's not even really a pet peeve, is it's just a little wiggly, but I mean, you can just tighten it down. I've noticed that the reason it comes unloose is when you're firing the gun, it starts to move back and forth a little bit, loosening it, but I've never had it fall off. And these are great iron sights. Before I ever got that, it took me a little while to get that ACOG, 
And the first time I ever used this, I used this with iron sights, and I was getting, I was doing target practice at the staging area, and I was getting BBs through a hole about that size at 100 feet, and this was just impromptu. I just picked it up and started sending rounds downrange, and it was amazingly accurate. And now that I got that ACOG on there, oh boy. I mean, part of that is because this has KWA's 2GX gearbox and hop-up, which is one of the best gearboxes and hop-ups you can ever get in anything. The other reason I like KWA is it's really high quality, and they started, I think they started out with their gas blowbacks, and those are really good. Um, going back to the sights for a second, I don't think they come with these anymore. I think it comes with this back flip-up sight, don't get me wrong. It still has the removable, this is also removable, which attaches with a screw here. Um, it comes with this back flip up, but I believe it comes with like one of those hokey triangle sights like on normal M4s that attach it to a rail. I believe they've done it away with the fold down one and they have like the triangular one that's detachable in my opinion like these because I can keep these on the gun with my optic on in case my optic goes down I still have my backup iron sights. So I guess while we're up here we got a standard RAS rail where you can mount all your different optics, part of the upper receiver. Again, full metal D-ring, RAS unit, full metal barrel, everything's full metal. Full barrel, upper, lower receiver, um, stock and grip are polymer. Let's see, you got your charging handle right here, which exposes the mock bolt and your hop-up assembly. Again, the hop-up is a great hop-up. You can tune it to, um, right now I think I have it all the way off. Oh, nope, I got it. Let me, let me move it back. There you go. It's a very like sensitive hop-up, but not in a bad way. Like You can change it to right where you want it, and it'll stay there. It's a great hop-up. I can't stress that more. Um, it does not have a functioning bolt catch. It's not a uh, blowback, but here's where the bolt release slash bolt catch is. You have the uh, fire selector, and here's it's, it's crisp clicking. It's safe, semi, full auto. It's a reassuring click into each position. I don't know how well the camera's going to pick that up, though. So, and we're going to leave it on safe. As you can see, here's some of like KWA trademarks. Made in Taiwan, KWA, KM4, SR10, caliber 6mm, and that is an individual serial number. Going back to this side, you have your forward assist, which serves no function. Shell deflector, again, serves no purpose. Uh, dust cover, again, all that good, happy warning label. We can remove that. I'll get rid of that later on. Also, another good thing about this gun is I shoot lefty, but I am righty, but it has an ambidextrous one-point sling attachment, and I do use a one-point sling in this. Uh, I think it's just better. It does have, I think, a place back here where you can put a traditional sling, and then you can just get an RIS sling adapter to go right up here um fake gas block and gas tube what else am I forgetting on this gun metal trigger uh retails for about 385 is the normal price that yep. you're gonna be looking on most websites uh this is not like classic armor or anything this will fit uh all most regular brand M oh, uh, yeah. M4 here, mags let's go into uh mags Right here, I have just a normal 300 round high cap. I think it's a JG one. In and oh yeah, that's the other thing I like about this gun is no magazine wobble. I mean, there's a slight maybe millimeter back and forth, but I mean that's necessary to get the mag out of the gun. It's not gonna be like in there and you're like fighting to pull it out. It is rock solid. You're you're not gonna have like some of that ridiculous mag wobble that you see in like some classic armies or JGs where it's just like all over the place. I mean, this is like solid, like this isn't going anywhere. But yet you can still do that to eject the mag. So that's just like a normal, I mean, I can't even, I don't even know what mag brand this is. I just found this one day. Goes in, comes out, it's fine. And then this is just a normal 130 round mag brand mid cap. Um, we got about like eight of these, these fit fine. They feed well. I mean, the gun feeds with all, like, all different sorts of magazines. So if you have feeding troubles with this gun, it's most likely your mags. So I've had a couple of feeding issues with some of these mags, not all of them. I mean, in general, these are good mags, but uh, King Arms mags brand caps are also pretty I've, good. I haven't had any problem with those. My yeah, I bought some of those. They're, they're pretty good. Use them. 
So, uh, oh, here, here's another mag. Um, no, not gonna fit. Okay, sorry. So, uh, going back to the attachments, I normally run it with these as just kind of like a normal infantry loadout type thing. Um, what I did recently get for Christmas, we're gonna subtract that and add in, da 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 da, M203, yay, everybody loves the M203. I'm gonna go noob tube some guys. No, this is a D Boys 3 in 1. I mean, it comes with like the D or the barrel adapter up here, and this is for when you take the bottom part of your M4 out. But obviously, I have the RRS, so I just took the front part off, the back part off, and installed this. Uh, I might, I'll do a separate review on this too later. Uh, I got this for Christmas. RRS attached. Here's the button to open it up. Let me get the. Grenade, this is a mad bull. I think it's like a 96 round grenade. This should take uh, most regular type yeah, grenades. Yeah, it takes most grenade shells. Some may need a little modification to fit in, but most likely Rarely, won't. Rarely, if that happens. I haven't found a shell that does that. I've tried different shells and aren't mine, but other people's in here. Fully seat it. Bring it back. It's not going anywhere. You got your safety right here. It's a two-stage safety. You got your trigger. Got your trigger guard. I am going to take the trigger guard off because here... I'll just put it onto the gun. Let me take the shell out first. Let's see if I can do this without taking five hours to do. Loosen up the RES attachments. And this is the uh, short version, yeah, so... Yeah, this is the short version. It's the D-Boys 3-in-1. It comes in a long and a short. The long version would be for an M16. If you got the long version, it'd probably be out towards the barrel. Here. You could put a long version on here if you wanted to, but I mean, out it'd be it'd be barrel, out towards probably. the barrel, or maybe just up to it. Tighten those down. 